G'day mate, I'm not actually Australian, but I've lived there and in the US of A. So let's take a look at some of the differences between the two countries. Let's get on with it. The coins are so big over here compared to America. I do miss the quarter, the little 25 cent coin, that's so handy. But like the 50 cent coin is huge. And then like the one and two dollar coins, I do like that. It's, it's pretty nice because I hate having your wallet just looks like it's full of cash and it's just one dollar notes in there. But um, why did they have to make the one dollar coin bigger than the two dollar coin? That just doesn't make any sense to me. Bit crazy. Uh, what else? So as soon as you come here, the first thing you're going to notice, obviously, is that we drive on the left side of the road. And that means our steering wheel is on the right. And if you're driving, it's pretty strange, especially if you're driving a manual, because you'll be using your left hand to change gears now. And there's a lot of manuals here. Uh, in America, about 3% of cars are manual, the new ones being sold. And in Australia, that's 9%. But... I just had a quick look on Gumtree, which is our local site like Craigslist. And no, I don't think it's as good as Craigslist because there's ads and there's premium versions and whatnot. We can pay more. And so on there, I saw, I did a search for manual cars, 41,000 manual cars and automatic 86,000. So quite a lot around still. And other things, you get in the car and you're used to looking up to the right for the rear, rear view mirror. And now you're going to be looking to the left, it's just little things like that. And when when I first got in, uh, I didn't put my knee down under the steering wheel because it's you're getting in from the other side, the other knee's going under. And I just kind of got all cramped up in there and had to get out and start again. It's these weird things that you don't think you'll notice. All right, um, also here's a map of what countries drive on the left. Only 34% of the population drives on the left, so. It's, it's kind of weird to me that there's still two different, a lot of changes for the new cars, but I guess all the road infrastructure, it's not worth changing at all. Uh, driver's license, they're a lot harder to get over here. A lot of younger people, they'll have their learners or their provisional license for a long time, whereas in America, everyone pretty much goes straight to their full license because it's a lot easier to get in America. Over here... There's a lot of steps, there's a lot of uh, writing it down in books and who did you go with, what car did you go on, what was their license number and how many nighttime hours you have to log a certain amount of nighttime and daytime driving and you have to start off with an L plate, which is this lovely L that you stick in your window and look like an awesome cool driver to everyone else. Sometimes the speed limit's lowered to like 90 k's for you and everyone else can go 100, it's a bit weird. Then you move on to a red P plate, and then after that, I think you have that for six months, and then you can move on to a green P plate, and then after that, finally you get your full license, and so, big ordeal. Yeah, luckily I just got given my Aussie one when I came over because I had an American one. Um, America, they love their flags, anthems, Pledge of Allegiance. When I first moved over there as a little... 11 year old, I went into class and they, oh, well, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and I thought, what is going on? This is weird as, and uh, yeah, it's just normal there, a lot of flags everywhere, in the classrooms, outside of the school, supermarket, you know, some people have it on their house, in Australia, you'd never see that, maybe on a school or a government building, but you're not going to see many, you know, just at people's houses and whatnot. So that was the difference to me. The roads are a little bit different, a little bit narrower. There's not as many um, like big divided highways. They do have quite a few, especially compared to New Zealand. It's pretty bad over there, over here. Uh, but they don't use yellow to say where the middle of the road is. So in America, you'd have a yellow dotted line down the middle saying, oh, there's oncoming traffic. Don't cross there or you'll die. And Aussie, it's all done with white lines, which is kind of confusing to me. I was on this street that had three lanes, and I thought they were all going forwards, but just two lanes were going forwards, and the other lane was coming back, and I almost went into the far lane thinking it was a turning lane, but there was a car coming towards me, so that was a little bit scary. Uh, at night time, 
they're a lot nicer. They've got these little reflectors that they stick all down the middle, down the sides, and they've got these sticks down the side of the road. And it, it, the whole place is lit up from your headlights, just reflecting back, and it looks amazing. Very nice. Uh, roundabouts. People in America don't really like roundabouts too much, especially in Alaska. We didn't have, we had a couple, they were only one lane, and people were very mad. And I thought, oh, just wait till you have to try a two lane roundabout. There's so many roundabouts in Australia, and they're pretty much always going to be two lanes of traffic, sometimes even three, in multiple ones, one after the other. Toilets. There's a lot of automatic flushes in America, and they're very loud. Uh, when I went back recently to America, I got a fright when it when it flushed on me automatically. I was like, oh man, I forgot about that, how they do that. Uh, in Aussie, they're mostly just going to be normal ones uh, with the push button. And a lot of, almost all of them are going to have the two options of whether it's a full flush or a half flush for doing, you know, wheeze or poo. Save a bit of water there. Uh, the urinals are a lot different. In Australia, they've got these weird, big, long ones that pretty much line the whole wall and you just stand there and piss onto the wall. <laughs> there's no privacy between you and the next bloke over. In America, there's, you know, you've got your own individual urinals and sometimes there's even a little divider between you so it's not awkward and you can get going straight away here. They're like, oh, here's a bit close. Oh no, there goes the washing machine. All right, I'm back. Heating. Ah, in America, the houses are lovely and warm. Even though it's real, maybe because I was in Alaska, but it was super warm in everyone's house, in every room of the house in Aussie. Uh, you're lucky it does get quite hot there, and you're lucky if you've got an air conditioner, and even then, some people won't use the air conditioner because they're worried about the cost of it. And most of the time it'll just be a heat pump, which I never heard of a heat pump in America, but maybe they have them, just not in the really cold places. This little unit that's in either your bedroom or the lounge room and it will just kind of heat or cool that one room. And But definitely like if you go to the bathroom or the kitchen, it's going to be cold or hot, you know, more like the outside temperature. There's, there's no such thing as double glazing or proper insulation here. Some of the roofs are insulated to keep the heat out, but that's about as far as that goes. People tend to be a lot friendlier in America with hugging and saying I love you and all that sort of thing. You don't have to be in a relationship with the person to say you love them. Um, it's very normal to end a phone call to your parents or whatnot with I love you over there, but not so much in Aussie, in New Zealand. Ice water. Every drink in America comes iced, and you'll notice that as soon as you get on the airplane over there, it'll just come with ice in it, and you'll think, what a rip off, like it's half, it's half ice, where the rest of the orange juice is just taken up by ice. Um, but yeah, they love it, I, I like it cold, but I don't like it ice, personally. A lot of birds in Aussie, noisy ones, big ones, and pelicans are scary. When I first saw them, I couldn't believe how big they were. Another thing is, they don't have daylight savings in Queensland, and so the sun comes up around 4.30 in the morning, and you just hear all these birds squawking away, they're so loud, tipping. Um, they pay people well enough over here, I guess, so tipping isn't as much of a thing. Then some places will put the tip jar out, but, you know, you're not really going to get much tips in there. It might be from Americans or something, but generally, as Aussies don't tip. And the service is definitely less than in America. They're not going to be around the table, like, constantly filling up your water. They're still friendly, but it's not going to be, like, in your face, um, you know, overly nice. And when you've come back from America, you kind of miss that a little bit. There's a big difference in coffee. In America, there's always an instant coffee pot that you can get, um... You know, at the gas station, they've got an amazing spread of coffee for one, one or two dollars. Usually, never more than two dollars, and you can get all the mochas and that you say mocha here instead of mocha. That was that was a bit weird. Uh, but yeah, so many coffee choices and so cheap. When you come over to Aussie, you can't find a drip coffee anywhere except maybe Starbucks and McDonald's. But no one has them in the house. It's hard to find them if you're out shopping for one for your house. 
So a lot of people have their own espresso maker or they just go out and get coffee. And then there's the other, you know, just having instant coffee. Instant coffee is so popular over here. Everyone has a jar of instant coffee in their cupboard. Whereas in America, you would just make a little drip pot of it. drive through coffee in Alaska, there was a drive through coffee shop on, you know, every street you could stop in. I don't know if it was because it was cold or that's how they do it in America, but over here, there's only one place I can know of, Zarafas, and they do a drive through but it's other than them, I don't know anywhere else you can get a drive through coffee. It's pretty rare. Uh, they love shortening the names of things over here, you know, instead of Barry, you'll be Baza. Um, McDonald's is shortened to Macca's. Here's an ad where they call it the brekkie instead of breakfast. It's kind of funny seeing all those things when you come over. Shops, all in one shops such as Walmart and we had one called Fred Meyer. You don't see anything like that in Aussie. You'll have like Big W but it'll just be clothing and toys and a bit of homewares. You're not going to find food and jewellery and everything all in one shop like you would in America. So that was a little bit, you know, you have to learn to go to a few different shops, but there's a lot more malls here. The malls are very busy. So you've got all the shops in there and every mall has a supermarket and if you're lucky, a movie theater in it as well. So you're all set once you get to a mall over here. The opening hours are a bit crappier than America. Like a lot of the malls in America will be open till eight or 9 p.m. every day or later. And a lot of the supermarkets, my supermarket was open till 11 p.m. every night. And then if you go to Walmart or Safeway, they're going to be open 24-7. They never close. Whereas in Aussie, or at least on the Gold Coast where I was, on Sunday, every supermarket closed at 6 p.m. And I couldn't believe that when I first saw that. And then they all closed at 9 o'clock at night on all the other days of the week. So very limited. After that, you're just limited to like some petrol stations and even them a lot of them will close the doors lock it and they'll just have a little service window and it's a glass one you can look through and be like oh get that bottle of coke over there and they'll run and get it for you all right let's have a look at some of the electrical fittings here you got your typical american light switch you've got the other style as well and in new zealand and australia you're just pretty much going to find the same basic switch here every time and it's it's real tiny, but it's kind of cool because you can fit this. You can fit six switches into the one plate. I would hate to wire that up. So many wires back there. Uh, fun fact: every switch here is a two-way switch, meaning you can put two to connect up to one light. Whereas in America, you'd have to buy a special switch for that. Uh, the plugins here, they love switches. Again, everything will have a switch on it. Even some of the little uh, multi-board boxes will have switches for each outlet. And it's kind of nice. Uh, people seem to be a lot more worried about wasting power here. Uh, if they have a dryer, like a washing machine and a dryer, they almost never use it. And if, they're, if you're house sitting, they'll mention the, the washing machine and how it works and they just won't say anything about the dryer because you know you don't use a dryer over here. People will hate how much electricity they use. And apparently that's pretty standard outside America. Yeah, everyone has a washing line or whatnot. Um, we'll have a look at the... So the American one, you know, like that surprised face look at it. With the, the mouth open wide. No switches. Fairly basic. Uh, different voltages. A lot of... Nowadays, a lot of your electronics, if you look at the, num the, the back of it, it'll tell you, you know, voltage range 100 to 240. So you can use it anywhere, anyway. And of course, you've probably heard by now about how much health insurance costs in America. That's one of the better things about not living there anymore. And that translates directly into car insurance as well. So over here, for one month, I pay about $25 a month for third-party car insurance. that just covers the other car, not my car. So it's $20, but in America, that same insurance would be... $150 for someone my age, so just ridiculous because you're covering all that health in case you crash and injure the person. So it's nice not having to do all that. Well, that's most of the things I could think of about uh, America and Australia. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you later. Have a good one.